Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, core faculty for the College of Health Sciences and Public Policy at Walden University. And in this um, seg segment, I, I want to be going over social stigma. Um, and so um, there's three levels of an ecological system uh, that uh, are discussed in this article regarding social stigma. Um, it's a real thing and um, it needs uh, coping strategies in order to be able to um, handle these um, situations. So um, sometimes the coping strategies actually um, are not very effective. So um, this goes over not only coping strategies, but also um, understanding how crises are different from midlife to later life. Um, so the coping strategies are different. Let me uh, switch gears at this point and um, take a look at something. So in this um, encyclopedia of geron gerontology, um, there's coping strategies that they talk about. Um, talk about um, problem-focused coping, um, which is directed at problem solving. Emotion-focused um, coping, and just coping strategies of crises that may um, involve. Um, and then there's that leads to self-blame, um, avoidance, or even the use of drugs or alcohol use. Um, so these are individual mechanisms of social psychology of stigma again a bit dated um, also um, understanding patients experiences of ill health um, again I'm kind of uh, perusing over this is 2015 a bit more recent um, and measures of coping for psychological well-being is a, a important one um, and then coping strategy um, indicator CSI um, so there's actually coping strategies, how well uh, you can cope with uh, like describing your friends, because describing your feelings to a friend, rearranged things so you problem, your problem could be solved, and then thought of many ideas before di deciding what to do. Anyway, so th this is actually a long scale. It has um, 33 questions, and so... Um, this is one that you can potentially administer to individuals. Encyclopedia of Adolescence, um, specific coping strategies um, in, in the um, life course. And then this talks about um, Susan Roth um, and Lawrence Cohen, who later conceptualized uh, coping in terms of the direction of the coping responses in, um, in, in relation to the threat or stressor. So I'm just going to um, now switch gears to the other half. So this part goes over um, caregiver caregivers, and I'm going to um, switch the screen around a little bit so that you can both see me and look at this. Um, caregivers of people with kidney disease, um, that's actually a coping mechanism that um, caretakers, caregivers uh, need to have. Um, and coping strategies, they actually studied 55 spouses of patients um, with end-stage uh, renal disease. And so um, kidney failure, again, um, that's something that takes a toll on not only the patient, but also the care the caregiver. Um, so now just looking at um, the locus of control and coping strategies, a lot of times uh, that's um, in internal locus of control versus external locus of control. Um, going into AIDS um, now, um, fighting spirit coping strategy, which is uh, thoroughly explained there. Um, and then 2012, um, looking at coping orientation of problem experience cope. Um, and this is Folkman and Lazarus's um, work. And this is emotion focused strategies. And then self regulation, emotion, and resistance. This is 2017, so um, we're going to take a look at this a bit. Um, so problem focused and appraisal focused coping can be subsumed into one coping strategy um so this is a task oriented coping um this form of coping directly addresses the task or the situation and provides optimal results during stressful situations such as in performance settings um so then it goes into some psychopathology um, understanding um, some of the stressful situations and how this can um, alter with uh, give decreased psychopathology and then 
um, emotion focused coping tends to increase emotional distress um, so task oriented better uh, decreased patho psychopathology emotion focused not so much um, then it goes into some biases toward a particular coping strategy and it would have to be uh, more inclusive over that performers rely on their creative uh, abilities employing complex coping strategies um, supporting their talent um, there's sometimes the reliance on negative coping strategies such as avoiding or blocking out conflict or distress include escaping into fantasy worlds and denying feelings of distress or detaching from the support offered by others uh, many performers also fall prey to excessive self-blame panic and fear of collapse or loss of control um, so it's a, co a complex endeavor coping um, and i'm going to be talking about this um, in the context of um, stigma so this is looking at a, a emotion regulation strategy for performing artists now you can um, look at this um, in self-regulation now there's nine activities um, emotional regulation there's about nine about 10 11 12 activities um, and then coping there's five self-regulation emotion regulation and coping um, then we go into health psychology which is actually um, was just published um, by Drake Levere um, and this is empathic uh, responding empathic responding hostile engagement and disengagement um, so um, while negative relationship focused coping strategies center or withdrawal um, and criticism in response to stress um, for example within the chronic illness literature empathic responding from the spouse has been found to be um, to buffer against the negative effects of spouse depression on both functional impairments and marital outcomes for individuals with rheumatoid arthritis um, so relationship focused coping is frequently used as a predictor when investigating uh, how the diagnosis and management of a chronic illness can impact both the person with a chronic illness and their partner's relationship satisfaction. Um, so this really um, is comprehensive um, understanding of um, coping mechanisms and um, during the times of stress. Um, and then I'm going to lead this to um, another place where um, uh, it will all make sense. Thank you for listening.